Hey, I'm Nancy Cavey, National ERISA and Individual Disability Attorney. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, I've got to give you a legal disclaimer. This podcast is not legal advice, but nothing will ever prevent me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games the disability carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. So off we go. Frequently, I get questions about how much a disability insurance claim might be worth. That's a difficult question to answer, but I'm going to try to walk through it and today talk about three things that impact the value of a disability insurance claim. So let's first talk generally about how much my long-term disability claim is worth, how the date you became disabled impacts how much your long-term disability claim is worth, and what a settlement or a buyout of your long-term disability policy or plan is. Okay? All right. Let's take a break before we come back. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. Now, let's say in that example that I gave you, the case is worth $1.2 million, but benefits are just limited to two years because of a subjective or, or um, uh, mental nervous um, limitation in the policy. That's pretty easy. 5,000 times 12 is 60,000 times two is $120,000. That is the starting point for the calculations. But let's say you have Social Security benefits of $3,000 a month. Your case is now worth $2,000 per month uh, times 24 months or $48,000. So you can see that the uh, pl policy or plan language can impact the value of the file based on um, limits in the period of time benefits are paid or offsets or reductions. Now that we've set the framework, let's talk about another question that I get, and that is, what's a settlement or a buyout, and is it is that in my best interest? If the disability carrier has accepted your claim or the court has granted your benefits or you are attempting to resolve your case by settlement, you need to understand uh, that the disability carrier is interested in trying to close your file for a price that's right for them. Otherwise, of course, you are going to be stuck sending in uh, attending physician statement forms, activity of daily living forms. They're going to hassle you on a monthly basis. They may put surveillance on you. They may do an IME. Despite the fact that your benefits are supposed to be paid monthly through the life of the policy, they're not interested in paying you those benefits. They want to get rid of you. And you might be thinking, it's time to get a divorce from this disability carrier. I want to settle my case or I want to buy out my benefits. When you settle a, an ERISA disability claim or an individual disability claim, you're giving up your monthly benefits in your policy through the date of your eligibility in exchange for a lump sum check. The disability carrier plan is buying out the policy benefits. It's a divorce, but it's a divorce that can't be modified. So if you change your mind and decide you want to continue to get your benefits, you're stuck. Now, as part of a settlement, you'll be giving up certain rights in exchange for the lump sum. That's going to include the policy, your ability to apply for disability insurance through that particular carrier. You're going to also agree not to say mean and nasty things about them. You agree to keep the settlement confidential, with the exception of disclosing it to tax advisors or financial planners. Uh, and you uh, basically agree that if you violate the terms of the confidentiality, that you will pay a penalty. The settlement has got to be right for you, given the circumstances of your claim. But many ask me, well, if I do this, it, are the terms of the settlement public record? In fact, the answer is no. If you and the disability carrier agreed to um, settle the case, the court, if you've got a lawsuit, will simply note that the case has been dismissed with prejudice, um, which is what you'll be asked to do as uh, part of any settlement. On the other hand, if you're not in litigation, you'll be asked to also sign a release, but, and that's confidential and private, so there's no public record. Most releases will say you can only disclose the terms of the settlement to your tax preparer or financial planner. 
And the only other exception to confidentiality is going to be if you've been subpoenaed to disclose that settlement. If that happens, the release will generally say, look, you've got to give us notice, us the disability carrier, so we can intervene and ask the court to keep this case uh, confidential. Now, if we're in a litigation setting, this case will settle generally at a mediation. And the mediation agreement and the settlement agreement and the release are all going to be confidential. The only thing the mediator is going to tell the court is that the case settled and the terms of the settlement won't be disclosed. The only public record, as I said, is going to be that the case settled and the case was dismissed. Now, as part of the analysis of the value of a case, there's another issue, and that's the issue of whether your benefits or settlement is going to be taxable. Generally speaking, the taxability of an ERISA disability settlement or buyout is considered taxable if you or your employer paid the premium for the coverage with pre-tax dollars. On the other hand, if you or your employer pay for the coverage with after-tax dollars, the benefit of the settlement is not taxable. Now, I'm not a tax lawyer and I'm not giving you any tax advice. That's something you'll have to talk to your tax preparer or accountant. But I want you to consider that if you live in a state that has state income tax, your settlement or buyout may also be subject to state tax. So obviously, before you try to determine the value of your case or even sell your case, you should be consulting with your tax preparer or tax consultant to get the right answer. Now, I will also tell you that when you sign a release of your case, that release is going to clearly say that the disability carrier or the plan isn't giving you any advice as to the taxability of the settlement. It's up to you to figure it out. And the release will clearly say that you're responsible for paying both the federal and state taxes. That's not part of the settlement agreement. I hope you have learned about how a uh, case is settled and as you can or valued and you can see that that determination is personal to you and whether or not a case should be settled again is personal to you based on your unique medical um, uh, uh, situation, the terms of the policy and of course the status of your litigation. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Winning Isn't Easy. If you've enjoyed this episode, consider liking our page, leaving a review, or sharing it with your friends and family. I would love it if you would subscribe to this podcast. And I want to tell you that we are running our 2022 KB Law Scholarship. It's up and running, and we're taking entries until August. Head over to kvlaw.com slash scholarships to enter. If you know of a deserving college student who needs assistance with uh, paying for their college education, this is the place for you. I hope you tune in next week for another insightful episode of Winning Isn't Easy.